Today's teachers are changing. They're demonstrating the power of technology to transform students' learning and inspire creative thinking. Technology is transforming the way today's children learn, and as a result, education is changing to accommodate these digital natives. In the industrial era, it was enough for children to master the three R's. For a long time, teaching didn't change. Learning didn't change. But then along came the 21st century. In this digital age, technology has become a driving force in the lives of today's children. In St. Clair County, technology tools are in place to enhance the curriculum. Teachers are demonstrating the power of technology to transform students' learning and inspire creative thinking. One tool being used is digital storytelling. Digital storytelling incorporates multimedia into the curriculum. Moreover, digital storytelling is a way to incorporate and teach 21st century technology skills such as information literacy, visual and technology literacy, global awareness and communication. It helps you interpret things in a different way. Like some people vision stories other than other people, so everybody will vision it the same way, so it helps you know what the reader uh, the writer is talking about. Digital storytelling is using technology to tell stories. Uh, they go through the same writing process they do on any writing piece, except for this piece is once they finish the writing process, they're going to take a storyboard and plan out there, just like you would plan out a movie. In sixth grade, you have many reluctant writers, and this is the one time that I don't have those reluctant writers. They're very excited about the writing. They still go through the same writing process of of brainstorming, we're still giving first drafts, we're still revising and editing and doing all of that process, but we're using a computer and Movie Maker 1 to do that with, so that's real exciting. Baseball Spectacular by Dylan Slank. Tenth better called the Empire. Guess who's tenth better? Is me. I was nervous because Noah Burgess was pitching. I like this better because it's, it's like, it's, it's more fun and it's not, it's not really, because if you write it then it's harder for the reader to get the image of what you're talking about. But then again, when you're doing the digital storytelling, they have you have the picture of what happened. So I like that better. The use of iPads is becoming more and more common in today's school. The iPad is a tablet computer designed as a platform for audiovisual media, including books, periodicals, movies, music, games, and web content. It's a great way to introduce technology to the students and also um, it's teaching them how to share and how to take turns and that's a big part of kindergarten. I think it's wonderful because we seem to be competing for their attention at all times so this is a great way to keep their attention and they are learning as they are engaged in something fun. The boys in the small group are using the iPad. There's four or five games loaded on to the iPad that they're able to use. They were doing some beginning sounds, ending sounds, vowel recognition. Um, there's also, for more of the beginning of the year, they did letter recognition and sound recognition, uh, matching. There's also some timed math activities that they're able to do, like addition and subtraction, where it times them and they have to do so many in a certain amount of time. I find after years of using the same textbook over and over and over again, I become complacent. We're using the iPad to supplement the teaching. I become more excited and in turn the kids become more excited. So I will quote one of my students <laughs> as saying she thinks all teachers should have an iPad to teach with because it just makes things fun. Today's high school students are required to take at least two years of foreign language classes. Today, in Catherine Leone's first year Spanish class at Port Huron Northern High School, students are collaborating to build a story in Spanish using a computer program called Edmodo. I would call it a social micro-blogging site. Very, very similar to Facebook. So many people are familiar with that, but you can blog things on there that people can comment on. But it's more specific to education. It's specifically for teachers and for students. If I did a story starter, in which I posted the start of a story in Spanish, and each student had to write at least one sentence to continue the story in Spanish and demonstrate their learning of the vocabulary we've, we've recently learned. What's nice about this is that it, they can collaborate in real time and they can see their ideas as they're popping up, which is kind of neat to be able to do that. I think Edmodo is a pretty interesting new 
Web 2.0 technology for schools because it really is a blend of what we're seeing in social media like Facebook and Twitter and MySpace that has that stream of information coming in but then has sort of the walled garden of what educators might want for keeping a contained classroom setting and it allows students to interact with other students and the teachers and gives them the opportunity to um, have access to learning resources, calendars, and updates from the teacher. I think it motivates the students more because it makes us feel like um, we're we're worth having like higher technology than just a pencil and paper and I think it's more exciting and more um, interaction between students and teachers. Another tool teachers are using is a learning management system called Moodle. At Algonac High School, Michelle Landrum's IB higher level biology class students are using Moodle in a variety of ways to work on lab projects. Moodle is a website that um, all of the class materials can be placed on. It is accessible from home, anywhere where you have internet access. Um, it's kind of an organizational tool that helps both the teacher and the student stay organized. They can access their class materials wherever they're at, whether they're at home or at school or at a library at grandma's house. Anytime you're organized, you're more efficient. And I think because of its ability to keep you organized, you do get more done. It's great because I think it, colleges are almost all blended learning and it helps them prepare and know how to post things on a forum. It helps them know what to expect when they leave high school. At first, when we walked into this classroom, both of us were like, wow, how are we going to work with computers? We like hated it. Yeah, we were like, what the heck is this? Why can't we be in a regular classroom and stuff? And then as the year got on, or went on, we realized that like, it's actually helpful. If we had computers in every class, we would be able to, like, in this class, I get a lot of work done. Yeah. And we, it's like, it just runs so smoothly, and you can do. You save like, time. Yeah, you can do more than one thing at a time. Instead of flipping through papers, you can just go online and look stuff up, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Video conferencing is another tool available to teachers and students in St. Clair County. A video conference gives students an opportunity to visit a place they might not be able to go otherwise, such as zoos, museums, NASA, U.S. Congress, and more. Schools all over St. Clair County use this technology on a daily basis. NASA was a, a nice fit in that they could give us some perspective about uh, rockets that you can't get in a, in a textbook or a website. It gives them first-hand knowledge. <laughs> they're, they're able to ask questions that interest them and, that, and get clarifications of items that uh, you know, you may not, it may not be in a reading but they can ask a first-hand person directly. Video conferencing, I think, can bring them to a place where they may never have visited or may never visit. I can show them um, what other parts of the world look like, other parts of the United States, even zoos that they may never go to visit, um, classrooms, how they differ, how the kids differ. Um, we did a video conference with a class in Texas and we were in our winter coats, they were out on the playground with shorts on. So that's something that's very interesting to, to students to make them aware that how things differ in different places. Through video conferencing, my students get to meet an actual survivor from the Holocaust. I'm so traumatized in retrospect. It's not feasible or practical to take 180, 220 students to the Holocaust Memorial Center, um, although we'd love to, we can't do that. And so through video conferencing, they actually get to see and hear and even interact through asking questions of a survivor. That's not something they could do without this type of technology. My students are never the same after this. They, they learn in a way that even though the book is good and I can tell them some stories in the classroom, once they hear the story from an actual survivor, it changes, it changes them, it changes their thinking. I think just meeting the, a person who actually went through it is kind of a, just like the, a huge impact, more than like reading about something or hearing about it. Actually 
talking with a person who was a part of this event really was a huge part of it. I had an experience to meet someone from the Holocaust, which I would never have been able to without technology or a teacher who would let us do this, but experience a story that was actually real. Teachers are using robotics technology as a tool to engage students and teach them how to solve real-life problems. Scott Isley, a teacher at St. Clair High, offers an after-school robotics class where students have the opportunity to compete in RoboFest, a yearly competition held at Lawrence Technological University. The competition this year is based on the oil spill that happened down the Gulf. And the students have to build a robot which will carry out uh, a styrofoam cup to cap a couple wells that are, are made out of PVC pipe. So they're learning, they're learning about robotics. They're also learning mechanical engineering skills by, by having to build a robot so it's functional, so it's robust, so it, it stays together when it falls off the table. Um, so all the gears work properly in mesh. Um, they're learning computer programming skills. They're learning, obviously, how to work as a team and how to solve problems. Science, there is a lot of math involved. There's also a lot of, um, you have to be able to think outside the box. Because there's a lot, sometimes you need to build big, complicated things to solve a simple problem. And it's really fun. It's really fun. An interactive whiteboard connects a computer and projector. The projector then displays the computer's desktop onto a board surface. Teachers all over St. Clair County are using interactive whiteboards as a tool to enhance their daily lessons. Particularly in physics, it seems like almost every problem we do ends up, one of the first steps that we want to do is draw a sketch of the, the problem. And, and so being able to use that board, it, it really facilitates making those sketches neat and um, repro you know, um, reproducible. We can draw one and save it and come back to it the next day and not have to get the colored chalk out and, and try to recreate those complicated drawings. So it's, it's a, a good use for that. They love it. They like that it's hands-on. They just, they really feel engaged. I, it tends to keep them all on task most of the time rather than um, just being at a center with activities that they're able to do on their own. We've been learning about nouns and verbs and um, we've been doing a lot of it whole group. So today during our center time I have a parent volunteer. The kids are um, just separating nouns into person, place and thing. And at the end of the lesson they are also um, putting some verbs in there. Now that I've used it for a couple of years, it's just, it's where the kids are at now. You can't not use it. Like if I blow a ball by them, I'm lost. It's just, it's where, it's how they think now. Student responders are an effective tool that helps enhance student learning. Teachers using response systems in St. Clair County have found that they create an interactive and engaging learning environment and allow them to gauge student understanding instantly. We, we find that the kids are very involved whenever we use the responders, they're very active, engaged in the lesson. Um, everyone's required to have an answer, so everyone is participating. So you don't just have those students who are constantly raising their hand, giving you the answer, you have everyone involved. Um, and the students send in their answer, and then the answer is immediately popped up on the screen. So I get immediate feedback. I know that all the students um, are learning what they should be learning or, if they're not, what, what the misconceptions are so I can clear that up immediately. So um, it's become a very invaluable tool. I can get input on them instantly. I, it's all, all of them are numbered by their classroom number. So I just, there's, I can even paste it and look at the results later. Um, I can pull up any result at any time when they're clicking or answering. It's, it's just one way to get them all involved. Of course, they always want to have the right answer or, or get 100% that all of them got it right, so that's their goal. It's, it's amazing. Today we use the smart board and clickers to review some concepts that we've been working on over the last couple of weeks, number properties and integer operations. The students want to perform, they want to compete, and they also like the fact that no one else knows what answer they're putting in. So they don't, they're not afraid to put down the wrong answer or the right answer, hopefully the right answer, but they're not afraid to get something wrong. And they learn from seeing the results right away. Right down that it is the sum. At Algonquin Middle School, 
Teacher Jamie Smith uses a multitude of technologies to teach math concepts. In this lesson, she is using a Mobi tablet, student responders, and her interactive whiteboard. This is an excellent example of mixing traditional teaching and integrating technology. Technology can encourage students to learn in alternative ways. At Holland Woods, students in the after-school program have been enticed to read by using the Nook, an electronic book reader. We had a special education student that uh, wanted to read the Nooks and the books that we had on our Nook was a little more advanced, I think, than he was reading. So he wanted to read one, we gave it a shot, and it was amazing how he read 23 pages um, in an hour. And every time he gets a chance now, if he can't get onto the Nook to read, he'll go to our own personal library that the after school program has here at Holland Woods and uh, pick the book up in, in a soft cover and read it. And I believe he's right now he's almost halfway through the book. So whereas he would have probably never have picked that book up off the shelf um, with the, the Nook, he, um, he, he grabbed hold of it. As you can see from these examples, Applying the principles of universal design allows teachers to create instructional opportunities that are flexible enough from the onset to engage all learners. In such classrooms, students become active learners who use diverse technologies to develop skills that will successfully carry them into the 21st century. Yeah, teachers across St. Clair County seem to be integrating more technology into their classrooms and I think a large part of that has to do with the fact that technology is more widely available at home through mobile devices like cell phones and iPod touches. Um, internet and Wi-Fi is more available in communities and in homes and so then we're also seeing in schools that they've been able to invest and bring that technology in and everyone is a little more comfortable with that and then able to see how it has learning applications and not just personal applications. The thing with children is their whole world is technologically based and so if you don't present it from a technological standpoint, point, many of them don't internalize their learning and see no relevance to their learning because in their world, pencil and paper is slowly becoming obsolete. It's to the point where I don't, I don't think I could ever go back to just the plain whiteboard and marker. It's just, and even in teaching, it's just refreshed my whole teaching as a teacher. And I've been teaching 10 years and I just feel like it's a whole new world out there with technology. I feel like it would be a disservice to my students not to use every piece of technology that I could because they're 21st century learners and um, that's what engages them, that's what they're going to be using in the future. 